Gerald Friedman. Ah, uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I submitted a uh, written testimony as well. Um, I've been at this for a long time. I moved to Massachusetts in 1978 to go to graduate school, and I've been teaching at U.S. State University since 1984. Um, some of my first uh, political activism in the 1970s was down in Washington in support of Senator Kennedy's Medicare for All program. Um, and I've been writing about Medicare for All and single payer for 30 years. Um, and in that time, things have only gotten worse. I mean, there have been little improvements. We have uh, the Affordable Care Act um, has increased the proportion of Americans with health insurance. But since the 1970s, our life expectancy compared with other affluent countries has fallen, and we are spending more and more on health care. Um, right now, in the United States, we're spending about 50% more per capita than the next highest spending country, Norway, and about twice as much per capita as other affluent countries. Yet our life expectancy is now almost four years less than other affluent countries. And given our spending, we're about eight years short of where we should be. Um, and this is not because Americans use too much health care. We use less than virtually any other affluent country. We go to the doctor four times a year compared to six for other affluent countries and compared to 12 for the Japanese who have the longest life expectancy. Um, waste is baked into our system. Um, basically, you could summarize it as two areas of waste. First, insurers have an incentive to sell less health insurance to healthy people and more to, uh, sorry, less health insurance to unhealthy people and more to healthy people. So they spend a lot of money identifying, cherry picking who's going to be healthy and lemon dropping, getting rid of the sick people or people who may become expensive. Secondly, waste is built into the healthcare system because the for-profit system gives an incentive to monopoly providers like the drug companies that people have been talking about to raise prices. The solution is a system of universal coverage that will get away from the adverse selection of the private health insurance system and will give a single state body the power to negotiate prices for drugs, for hospital care, for medical devices. Such a system would save over $30 billion this year. And I'm, all my numbers are pre-COVID, so yeah, that's another whole story. Um, it would save, by giving universal coverage, we could save, four I estimate, 4,000 lives in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We have a very good healthcare system in this, in this state. We have among the highest life expectancy in the country, but we still have problems and saving 4,000 lives is worth quite a, quite a bit. The middle class would benefit, working people would benefit, businesses would benefit, and finally, the Commonwealth itself would save almost a billion dollars and local and state and local governments would save $2 billion on lower health insurance costs. If you have a better way to balance your budget, balance our budgets, then you know, let's do it. But this is an immediate infusion of local aid without costing the Commonwealth anything on the contrary. So thank you very much. I'm sorry for going over time. It's okay, thank you, um, Gerald. Um, this question I have for you, I think would be appropriate. So Vermont, uh, through the Government Analysis and Colorado, through the defeated ballot initiative, found proposals for a single uh, payer healthcare system unworkable due to the amount of taxes and government spending required to fund it. What makes Massachusetts different in that regard? Um, I think what makes Massachusetts different is I think our politicians have the courage to take on serious problems. Ma uh, Vermont, the original report by two Massachusetts professors, Bill Shaw at Harvard and Jonathan Gruber at MIT, uh, it projected that a, in 2011, projected that a single payer plan would require an 11.5% payroll tax. 
Um, the final report from the Green Mountain Co Care Commission projected an 11.5% payroll tax six years after the original report, exactly what had been projected. Um, but Governor Shumlin um, and people in the legislature feared that that type of, pay, of tax increase would scare people off and would cost, elect, cost them re-election. I have sympathy with politicians concerned about re-election. The solution, I think, was to go explain better to the public that you'll be saving more in, pay, in um, health insurance premiums and saving more in co-pays and deductibles, and you'll be saving more because everybody will have better health care and be healthier and more productive um, rather than giving up on the program. But that's, I think, what happened in Vermont. You're absolutely right. Your question is a very good question. It's the first question I get when talking about state single payer. What about Vermont? Um, Colorado and you could go California, other referendums have failed. Some of the, and Massachusetts, the referendum failed uh, 15, 20 years ago. Um, some of this is, there are interests that are prepared to spend a boatload of money to defeat um, uh, programs like this. Um, every dollar in savings that I'm talking about comes out of somebody's pocket. Um, it's a farm, big pharma, big hospitals, um, and yeah, so their economic interests. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, members of the committee? Uh, Senator Friedman. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to ask my same question to you. Okay, uh -huh. Medicare, and again, I very much support major changes to our healthcare system. Medicare rations health care. It doesn't do it nastily, doesn't do it. It's very transparent. It's very, you know, so how do we reconcile that with what's happening today? I, I'm very concerned with the testimony because it sounds to me like everybody's saying Medicare for all or single payer for all will fix everything. And it's very hard for us as legislators who have been working in healthcare to push that narrative because we know it's not true. Not saying it may not be better, not saying you know it's, it's logical, but can we just be clear, isn't that true? Medicare decides what it's gonna pay for, does not pay for what it won't pay for, that has drug panels that it will it will it will approve it proves some drugs and not all drugs so how does that how does that reconcile why is that better than basically changing our system capping hospital costs shifting dollars to primary care how, how is that why is that better it's clear because it's i got because that but. Clear and simpler is better, but the major thing is the current system, any system is going to ration in one way or another. The current right. system rations on the basis of, for very rich people, ability to pay, or for most of us, what the people in the insurance company are willing to pay for us. And they are making money off of denying us care. A better system, as is done in most of the world, would do it on the basis of medical decisions, which are difficult. I mean, you know, I have long discussions with my wife about, do we want to, should we be using preventable years of lives lost? Um, how do we ration in, an, in a morally, ethically efficient way? But doing it on that basis, we can discuss. Doing it on the basis that I'm going to make money by, closing down my prior authorization at 430 and not being open on weekends. So you're just not going to get it. Doing it on the basis that your MS drug is just too expensive. Your life is not worth my profit. I want these decisions to be made transparently, openly, and on the basis of our moral judgments trying to make life better for people, not trying to make profits for enormously successful companies. And this gets back to the problem of how has it failed politically? You have um, 
big pharma, the top five pharmaceutical companies are worth about $2 trillion. The top 10 health insurance companies are worth about a trillion dollars. The average CEO pay at those companies is $13 million. That was two years ago. I was in a room two years ago, right before COVID, with the heads of the research and teaching hospitals in the United States. And I looked around and I realized I'm the only person here making less than a million dollars. And they're making that money on our yeah. Our health insurance premiums. Now, you've answered my question, and I really appreciate it. I think, you know, that we are, you know, I just, I want us to be very clear when we're explaining to people, because we get into trouble when we don't, when we aren't clear, and then we're called out by great interests. I totally agree with you. Enormous money interests. But I just wanted to to be clear about how Medicare works, and I appreciate that you answered my question. Thank you.